So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. Now, back with another video about Pluto. Yes, my childhood was ruined. You know what I mean? In the last video we talked about with Pluto, me finding out that Pluto is, is not considered a planet because it doesn't meet all the criteria. So they had to downgrade it to a dwarf planet. Like, just ruined my entire ch how many of y'all had to do the little science project and all that kind of stuff and do the planets and everything yeah just ruined it ruined my childhood but anyway we about to check this video out so apparently the hubble telescope confirms the 10th planet discovery reveals it's larger than pluto all right so we're gonna get into this video man if you knew you know what to do hit that subscribe button join the fam let's check it out Whether it's the planet next door or billions of light years away, there are fascinating discoveries sat around every corner in space. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three incredible astronomical discoveries. Hubble finds 10th planet slightly larger than Pluto. We know of Pluto, the now dwarf planet that was previously masquerading as a planet. So, as of 2006, our solar system features just eight planets. Despite this demotion to a- It's hard for me to let go, man. Especially since we've known since our childhood that this is the way it was told to us it goes. It's hard to let that go. To now hear them say that about Pluto, man. You know what I mean? I almost want to get happy. Be like, nah, I got Pluto's back. Nah, nah, we're not doing that. <laughs> ...previously masquerading as a planet. So, as of 2006, our solar system features just eight planets. Despite this demotion to a dwarf planet, Pluto is not alone in this ranking, with others being found within our solar system. Perhaps most notable among these is Eris, a dwarf planet perhaps more commonly known as Xena but earning its official Eris. name from the Greco-Roman goddess of discord and strife. It's only fitting, given the name, that there Ooh. has been some contradictions and disagreements as we have tried to uncover more about the dwarf planet. Upon the initial discovery of Eris, the dwarf planet appeared to be slightly bigger than Pluto. Because of its seemingly greater size, it was joked that scientists had discovered a so-called tenth planet, which would give Eris the same temporary planetary status Pluto had once held, which would be fitting had it been truly larger. Further research into the size of Eris revealed that while it is true that the dwarf planet has a mass 27% higher than Pluto does, the volume of the planet is still smaller overall. Adding further confusion to the subject, our measurements regarding the diameter of these two dwarf planets do not reflect what we initially expected as observations made from down here on Earth with grounded equipment suggest that Eris had a diameter of approximately 1,848.6 miles, 30% larger than the diameter of Pluto. However, the Hubble Space Telescope revealed that a more accurate number is 1,490 miles compared to Pluto's 1,422. <laughs> Despite the results not being definitively conclusive, Pluto is generally considered to be the largest dwarf planet, with Eris pulling in at a very close second place. Mike Brown, a planetary scientist at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, California, was on the team that discovered Eris, or Xena, back in 2005, alongside Chad Trujillo and David Rabinovitz. I don't know why, but I feel like it's some significance to the actual size of the planets. And I don't know if they haven't covered that yet, or they have covered it. Maybe the reasoning why a planet would be that size is it due to, I don't know, uh, you know what I mean? Whatever the reason is. But I'm starting to think that when you start to discover and realize, okay, Pluto is this, but okay, now we have Aries, and Aries is similar to Pluto. Pluto is a little bit bigger, but Aries is right. What is that? meaning i just feel i just fear that there's a significant meaning behind that size thing five alongside chad trujillo and david rabinovitz 
Their research was published in the Astrophysical Journal, and Brown explained that only the Hubble telescope would have been able to assist this discovery. He explained that, with the technology available in 2005 at least, Hubble was the only telescope that would have been able to capture a clean, visible light measurement of the actual diameter of Eris. If this research were to be conducted today, the Webb telescope may be used to carry out these observations instead. With only a few images from Hubble, the team were able to find a more accurate number to determine Eris's diameter. This information has helped to debunk the tenth planet myth and put Pluto back on top as the largest dwarf planet. But researchers did not stop there. There are several ideas and theories speculating why Eris was so deceptively large. For example, it's incredibly bright compared to its small size, making it the second most reflective object in our solar system. It has been suggested that it is so reflective because of the frost sitting on the surface of the dwarf planet, perhaps as a result of leaking methane gas or distance from the sun, freezing any atmosphere that used to be present. Eris is considered a TNO, or a trans-Neptunian object, orbiting further out from the sun than Neptune. Eris is catalogued here as 2003 UB313 and holds the title of being the largest object in space to have not received a spacecraft visitor. Finding that there is more out there than we first thought in our solar system is fascinating. Even though Eris missed yes. out on earning the 10th planet title, it's an impressive dwarf planet taking up a good amount of space. Perhaps one day Eris will receive a visitor spacecraft and we can find out more about the frozen dwarf planet. This is popping up all over the place, ain't they? Huge nuclear explosion in space called GRB 190829A. There are some wonderful phenomena that take place in the depths of the universe, and recent observations have shown one of the brightest explosions we have ever been able to see across anywhere in the universe. It's believed that this is the result of a long afterglow of a gamma ray, perhaps the longest one to date. The GRB is a highly energetic explosion resulting in a huge amount of light. They have been said to be the brightest events to have taken place, second only to the Big Bang itself. These yeah, events, but if it's that bright that we could see, how far away does that mean it is? You know what I mean? For us to see something that bright, yeah. It's got to be, whew, talking about billions of probably years away. I don't know, maybe that bright. Or is, it, or is it the other way around? That's got to mean it's close, right? I think I got that confused. Is that that means it's close? Because if the light is faint, then that means how far is away. See, I still get confused with this and trying to figure all of this out and what it means, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm still a novice at this, but I think that's I think I got it confused and better. I think the the brighter it is, meaning the closer it is, right? In place, second only to the Big Bang itself. These events have been observed in distant galaxies, far from our own. The radiation as a result of these is theorized to be released during supernovas at the end of the life of a star. GRBs have two separate stages that they go through. There is an initial phase that lasts for only tens of seconds. Following this, there is a long afterglow, the phase of a GRB during which these events are almost always detected. These afterglows are smoothly fading and remain visible for a long time following the initial prompt. This is what provides the bright observable effects. Observations of GRB 190829A has caused some questions, making us wonder if how we understand the production of gamma rays is right at all. These observations were made by the Higher Energy Stereoscopic System. GRB 190829A gave us a unique opportunity to study these events more closely, as GRBs are, on average, 20 billion light years away, though this particular one was just 1 billion light years away, placing it close enough so, hold on. to make observations that we would never have been able to make before. Okay, so it was billions of light years away. Billions of light years away and we were still able to see that? That's a huge explosion. Huge explosion, man. Like, do you understand the magnitude of how big of an explosion that has to be? 
to be that far away and we still be able to see it? Wow. Light years away. Wow. Though this particular one was just one billion light years away, placing it close just enough to make billion. observations <laughs> that we would never have been able to make before. It didn't take long for questions to arise, as the team noticed some uncanny similarities between the X-ray and gamma-ray emissions. The current hypothesis to explain this is that the emission components are produced separately from one another, a process referred to as synchrotron. Whilst this explanation makes sense, our current theories deem this highly unlikely, due to a burn-off limit when these particles cool in an accelerator. Exploring Mars by Sailplane The Red Planet has been a focus of a great deal of scientific research throughout the years. From the search for evidence of Martian life to exploring the physical features of this planet, we have been investigating this planet for many lifetimes. The latest stage in this research is underway, as some new revolutionary engineering could completely change how we explore Mars. Engineers have been designing a sailplane, able to fly above the surface of Mars for several consecutive days before landing. This sailplane is intended to be motorless and is pushed forth using only the wind energy on Mars. To accompany the technology that is oh, already why? keeping their eyes on Mars, engineers are working on a new piece of equipment to help us probe further within the Red Planet. A team well, of what's wrong with the rovers, though? Did, something, did, did, I, did I miss something? Like, what happened? Now, I know that the rough terrain can cause those rovers to kind of tip over or something to happen, and they're still kind of unsure of all the how, you know what I mean, strong the ground is, how hard the soil is, or whatever that they're dealing with on Mars. I get that. But just to completely go away from the rover and to go this route, I, don't, I ain't really grasping what they're trying to do with this. A company, the technology that is already keeping their eyes on Mars, engineers are working on a new piece of equipment to help us probe further within the Red Planet. A team of engineers based at the University of Arizona and research scientist Alexandra Kling from NASA's Mars Climate Modeling Center have been working on lightweight, motorless sailplanes that will be able to roam around Mars. The sailplanes will be fitted with temperature sensors, gas sensors and cameras, yet the current design suggests they will weigh only 11 pounds per plane. It was this ambitious plan that led to NASA's Ingenuity. Ingenuity has the nickname Ginny and is a small-scale robotic coaxial rotor helicopter that made it to Mars in 2020, alongside the Perseverance rover. Right. Ingenuity clocks in at just four pounds, and is the first time we have been able to have a device flown in a controlled manner on another planet. While Ingenuity is an incredible accomplishment, these new plans are far more ambitious. NASA's Ginny is able to reach 12 meters in height and can only fly for short periods. The sailplanes, however, aim to overcome these limitations by flying in directions and manners that best support the wind patterns on Mars. Wind patterns will alter and shift when they encounter physical differences, such as volcanoes or canyons. Okay, I get it now. So basically, this is a result of all the problems they've been having with the rovers and different things that have been sent to Mars. They've been met with different obstacles, and this is a result of that. Okay, because I was like, I hadn't really been hearing anything going wrong with the rover i think that one time we saw a video to where one of them tipped over or something like that and then something broke on it and it wasn't able to extract the soil um that it, it was trying to get the soil samples to bring back so i think that kind of may have prompted them to to do this but obviously it's a result of the obstacles they were running into i get it now like before i was like if it ain't broke now we'll fix it. The sailplanes, however, aim to overcome these limitations by flying in directions and manners that best support the wind patterns on Mars. Wind patterns will alter and shift when they encounter physical differences, such as volcanoes or canyons. These sailplanes will utilize these fluctuations, taking advantage of what is present. The sailplanes are designed to move between static soaring when there are enough vertical winds, or to move into dynamic soaring when horizontal wind speed increases. Typically, horizontal wind speed will increase as the height of the vehicle does, essentially meaning that the higher the altitude, 
the higher the horizontal wind speed. This is especially true on Mars. Being able to send these sailplanes to Mars is another problem researchers have encountered, with the current suggestion being to pack the sailplanes on a spacecraft in CubeSats, a type of research spacecraft known as a nanosatellite. An alternate suggestion would be to use a balloon-like structure to lower the sailplanes into the atmosphere. This research is incredibly fascinating. With this equipment, we would not only be pushing the boundaries of what we considered possible here on Earth, but also advancing our knowledge of another planet in our solar system. A proposal paper for this research project can be found published in the scientific journal Aerospace. Between new observations and advancing technology, we are only bound to continue to advance our understanding of the world, solar system and the universe that we live in. But what do you make of these incredible discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Bro, we just got to keep them funded. That's the, <laughs> I think that's the most important thing. Hold on, was there some video left? Okay, that was the end of the video. Yeah, we got to keep them funded, man. We got to make sure NASA is able to stay funded as much as possible, man. You know what I mean? And I know that kind of changes with each, with each person that comes into office, you know, feeling like what and what cannot. But anyway, yeah, we got to keep them funded, bro, because I'm all about, you know, the rover getting some more help. I was just, you know, hesitant of as to why. My question was more so on the why side are we doing that if that's working maybe we just needed to tweak a few things but obviously they were they were hit with a lot of obstacles possibly with that rover to come up with that like they even went completely total different design on that you know what i mean with the rover being able to be on ground drive around be controlled this is more like a fly utilize the wind type of situation you know what i mean so still in all super dope great information and i hope you guys Learn something from this. You know what I mean? It's the most important thing. You took away something. So um, make sure y'all stick around and stay tuned. Leave a like, share, and until uh, the next one, I'm gone. Peace.